for blessing us our hearts this morning in praise and worship. Let's rise as the people of God as we celebrate all the wonderful things God has for us. And this Pentecost Sunday as we sing together, welcome into this place. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence this morning rejoicing over the victory of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
rejoicing over the gift of the descending of the Holy Spirit into our hearts, into our lives. We rejoice this morning, Heavenly Father, for the divine plans that you have for us as your sons and daughters in this world today. And we praise and thank you, Lord God, that by faith we walk and not by sight. And we rejoice every day, Lord, as we carry out your work in this world. Bless us as we come this morning in worship, hungry, thirsty, needing, and uh, the word from you, Lord, that will bless us so that we may be a blessing to those around us. We pray for your church around the world, Lord God, that we may stand upon you, our rock and our salvation, our redeemer, and we may carry forth your work until you call us home. Until we hear from you, well done, thy good and faithful servants. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Good morning, church. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord this morning on this third Sunday in our Pentecost celebration. It's very clear, we're acknowledging this morning our graduates. Uh, some can be with us, some can't, but we're going to acknowledge them. The names are there in the, in the worship folder for us. It's also our time when we transition into the summer months and so we're encouraging our members who, uh, who are traveling. We have several who are traveling this morning. Uh, we have several members who are having to work this morning. But more importantly, they were saying, remember, church is an important part of our journey as a people of God. Amen? And that we continue to use all the uh, technologies necessary to be in the house of the Lord with us, whether it be YouTube or our Instagram account or what have you. Amen? Our opening hymn is so appropriate, hymn 102. Let's sing together.
prayer, right? Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet Heavenly Dove. I invite you to kneel or to sit at this time for our time of confession and our time of absolution. It is responsibly put in your worship folders this morning as a people of God. Hear my voice. My mouth is filled with your praise. O Lord, open thou my lips. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Almighty everlasting Father, the God of all grace and mercy, forgive us our sins known and unknown. fellow saints, I now ask you before God, is this your sincere confession? Yes. My brothers and sisters and fellow saints, you are forgiven just as Christ has promised. In the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I want to pronounce you today the full forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. Saints, as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, of course, we, we pray for our Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate. We have a new but re-elected synodical president, as you can see with the note in your worship folder. We also want to pray for our graduates, uh, and we praise and thank God as we have a chance to celebrate them and to acknowledge milestones in their lives. We also want to acknowledge this morning the Laurent family. We were able to uh, have a wonderful homegoing celebration yesterday uh, for our sister Gwendolyn Laurent. Uh, we praise and thank God for the opportunity not only to host, but also to be light to people and their difficult times in life and their mourning and grieving. Amen? And also we want to give praise and thanks uh, for this week. Remember I ask you, starting June 30th through the July 4th week, that we would be immense and immersed in our prayer life for our nation. As we celebrate the 4th of July, we want to acknowledge the fact that our nation needs to return to God. Amen? And that our nation needs to be thinking about all people that God has created in his image. And that we would, as we celebrate our independence and the founding of this nation, that we would be as a church, the people of God. Those of us who know Jesus for ourselves. Amen? Amen? That we pray that our nation, in the midst of all this chaos, would turn to God for help. Because certainly we need it. And the church say amen. amen. We also want to also lift up uh, those who are traveling uh, Ray Johnson has traveled to Miami. He has a very ill family member. He's asking for prayer this morning. He's texting us to let us know he is there. So we're not being worshipped. Also sends his regrets that he's not here for graduation recognition. Also, uh, the Millers are traveling this weekend as well. And they ask for your blessings on them as they travel this weekend. And uh, mercies and peace be with them. Also, we have um, others in our congregation who are asking for prayer. Uh, Melba. Uh, has had a issue with one of her eyes, and she's only able to now see out of one, and she's having some issues, and she's saying, church, pray for me, all right, for Melba Cannon, and that, and then also uh, Rosalind Miles has had a small fall at home, 
and she's asking the church will give her strength to keep going on and be a blessing for her as well. Uh, we also know that Ricky's not in church because he's having to work overtime. So we pray for Ricky, who has to be at work. We have those that have to work on Sundays. We ask God's blessings on them as well. We also continue um, to lift up uh, Fifi's mom, who came home from the hospital. We prayed for her, and God has delivered her and brought her back home, had a chance to hear her voice yesterday and give thanks for her. Also, we want to uh, lift up Janice and Janet at home. Uh, God's blessings and peace be with them. They're asking for God's blessings and peace as they cannot be here. They just grieve over not being able to be in worship with us uh, as a people of God. We turn our hearts to the Lord in prayer. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Got a chance to talk to Joyce Whitaker, who was hospitalized uh, this past week. She is now home, but she definitely is asking us for prayer. Thank you for reminding me about that. Reach out to our sister Joyce Whitaker. Amen. Thank you. Father God of heaven and earth, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come thanking you and praising you for that peace that surpasses all of our human understanding that you blessed us to share in because of your victory over sin, over death, and over the grave, and that we're able to walk boldly every day in this life regardless of the challenges and the temptations and the struggles of this world. We're able to move forward in faith, Lord God, to achieve the things you desire for us to do as your church here on earth that you have blessed with the waters of Holy Communion, that you've given your body and your blood to, that you've sent your Holy Spirit to dwell amongst us so that we may keep the main thing, the main thing, reaching out, touching, and proclaiming the good news of the gospel until you call us home, until we hear you say to us, well done, thy good and faithful servants. Lord, in thy mercy, Lord, we pray for our nation as we celebrate our independence. Uh, day again, Lord God, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for the blessings of being citizens of this United States of America, Lord God. But Heavenly Father, we want to admit you this morning, we have embarrassed you. We have not done what we should be doing as a nation. Worshiping you, praising you, and thanking you, reaching out and caring for all men, women, and children that you created in your divine, righteous, and holy image, Lord God. We plead for your blood to cover us, Lord God, and that your church, who knows you and your plans for your creation, Lord God, would rise up, Lord God, and stand in the gap for those who cannot stand for themselves. Lord, in thy mercy. Lord, we praise and thank you, Heavenly Father. That in these days and in these times, Lord, you're able to give us opportunities, Lord God, to enjoy the beauty and the vastness of this creation. So we pray, Lord God, for your mercies to be with our members and guests who are traveling, Lord God. Watch over them, guide them safely to their destinations, let them arrive then safely home as well. Lord, in thy mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we rejoice this morning that we are Pentecost saints with the gift of your Holy Spirit, Lord God, in us, using us, blessing us, and equipping us to do great things for your kingdom. And Lord God, today we celebrate all of our 2019 graduates, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the, for the milestone that they have reached, Lord, and for the divine plans you have yet for them as they continue to walk by faith and not by sight, as they lean upon you, Lord God, to carry them through this journey of life. And that you may show them, Lord, the wonderful plans that you have for them, Lord. That you may bless them that everything around them may be able to flourish and be blessed because they know you as the Lord and Savior and King of their lives who has never, ever failed them, Lord God, in this life. Bless us, Lord God, as we celebrate them in just a few moments. Lord, in thy mercy. Lord, we praise and thank you that we're able to celebrate uh, the gift of Gwen yesterday. Oh, Lord God, thank you for being present. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for providing traveling mercies for all those who traveled, Lord, near and far to be here, Lord God, to celebrate your daughter and her 95 years, almost 96 years of life, Lord. 
We thank you for the privilege, Lord God, of being able to be touched by her spirit and to be able to work with her for so many years in ministry, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the ripple effect of all the students she taught, Lord. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, she was blessed with 70 years of marriage. We ask, Lord God, that you would now let your peace and your comfort and your assurance to continue to be with the Laron family, Lord God, as they continue to carry the torch until they see her face to face again. Lord, in thy mercy. We thank and praise you, Lord God, for these summer months, and we lift up to you all of our summer outreach ministries, Lord God. We lift up to you Third Thursday. We lift up to you our summer music academy. Uh, we lift up to you Monday night Bible study and fellowship. We lift up to you Friday night prayer and praise, Lord God. We lift up to, you, up to you, Lord God, opportunities to reach out to our youth and to develop our youth trip this summer, Lord. We know all these things are possible. And we ask, Lord God, you bless us as we continue to be faithful with our time, our talents, and our treasures, Lord God, to carry your work out. Lord, in thy mercy. Lord, we pray for those who are sick and those who are shut in. Those who have called in, Lord God, or text in for special prayers. We lift up uh, Ray Johnson's family, Lord God, member who's going through a difficult time. We lift up Rosalind Miles and Mel Buchanan, Lord God. We lift up Joyce Whitaker to you, Lord, today. We lift up to you, Mrs. Locke, Heavenly Father, that you continue to bless them. Keep them strong in their faith, Lord God, as they continue to fight the good fight of faith every day of their lives. We lift up to you, Lord God, our other members who are sick and shut in, who cannot be present that you would just shower your love, your blessings, your grace, your mercy, Lord God, upon them as they lift up holy hands and praise you, Lord God, for the faith relationship they have with you. Lord, in thy mercy, we pray, Lord God, for our members who are having to work on Sundays, Lord. We realize, Lord, that you said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. But to the victory, Lord God, you've given us on the cross, we know that our Sabbath, Lord God, can be set aside with you. And we pray, Lord God, that you would bless our members, Lord God, to realize an intimate time with you, Lord God, of word and prayer and meditation is a part of who we are and what we do. Lord, in thy mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for our Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate. We thank you, Lord God, for this previous election process. We thank you, Lord God, for our upcoming international convention, Lord. We pray for peace and unity and one heart and one mind as we carry out your work, Lord God, as your church here on earth. Bless, Lord God, our leaders and our churches, Lord God, uh, that we may, Lord, be faithful under shepherds, Lord God, to do the work you've called us to do. We pray in advance for traveling mercies, Lord God, and for administrative order, Lord God, for that convention as it's being prepared in Tampa, Lord God. We know all things are possible, and we ask, Lord God, your mercies. But more importantly, that we would serve you and none other. Lord, in thy mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we praise you, we thank you, we worship you. And we ask you, Lord God, today to remember us, for you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. I'd like to welcome those in the narthex and to worship. What a blessing to have you made it safely to God's house this morning. Our next hymn, how appropriate for a graduation Sunday, how appropriate for us in our lives, leaning on the everlasting arm. Hymn number 220.
Saints, this morning as we receive our tithes and our offerings, we share our time, we share our talents, we share our spiritual gifts and gratitude to God for all he has done for us. Amen? Amen. He continues to bless us in abundance every day, and we say, Lord, take back whatever you want, because everything I have is yours anyway. Amen? We sing together, give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And I let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am Because of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we're grateful. And so we rise and we sing together, thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, where would we be without a relationship with you? To know that your spirit shaped us, guided us, helped us to fight the evil one, blessed us, Lord God, to do great things in your name. We are grateful, Lord. And so we bring back to you, Lord God, what you asked of us, our time, our talents, and our treasures, Lord God, at your altar. Bless them, Lord God, that they may be a blessing to everyone around us, that others may know you as we do, that others may come to the knowledge of the truth, that others may be able to say, yes, Lord, and be able to experience the joy of an eternal life in heaven with us, with you, and with the Father. And the church said, amen and amen. You may be seated if you would, church. Amen. You know, there are just times really in our lives where God just simply lets us know that we're on the right track. Amen? I'm sorry? Yeah, Deacon Martin, if you would come on up, please. All right. Um, one of the things that happens for us as a people of God is that we don't applaud enough those who are striving. We can say something critical now, you know, we're good at that. But when people are actually moving in faith, they're working hard, they're giving it their best, they're calling on Jesus, they're suffering, they're fighting a good fight of faith, then that kind of goes flat, right? Oh, that's what you should be doing, right? But when it comes to acknowledging really our students of St. Paul who continue to be faithful and do the work, we just have to say thank you, Lord, for their faithfulness. 
And it's been our tradition for many years to be sure that we acknowledge the milestones of any of our children, regardless of what it is. Whether it be preschool to graduate school to postgraduate school, we acknowledge it because we know it's about God's divine plan for their lives, right? That's who we are, and we acknowledge that in a very, very special way. So I'm going to need a handheld mic if I could, uh, Kevin. Thank you. I got it. I got it. Okay. So several of our um, members cannot be here, and I'll try to give you a little bit of a story, and we'll acknowledge those who are here with us. Okay, so I'm expecting that Kamari would show up. I was thought they would be here. They were here yesterday at church, so we'll see what's going on with that. Dana um, is not going to be with us this morning because of distance issues. Lisa will not be with us this morning because of distance issues as well. And so those two are not with us this morning, and I'm praying that Kamari shows up before the end of the church service this morning, okay? So what we'd like to do this morning is, first of all, to acknowledge um, Enoch, uh, who is not just Enoch, he is Vicar Jean Enoch Burris, all right? Let's thank the Lord for uh, Vicar Burris' graduation from Concordia University, Irvine. We had a big celebration. We had a big celebration here um, after the graduation, uh, May 5th or 6th weekend for him, but there's never another way of saying thank the Lord for him. He will be our vicar here at St. Paul for the next four to five years, and then there'll be another milestone and celebration for him in his life, and we just praise and thank God for him. And uh, Fifi has something, going to share with you something from our congregation, as well as a gift. Certificate of Completion, St. Paul Evangelical Lutheran Church, Los Angeles, California. Acknowledge that Jean Enot Burris, Burris, BA, Concordia University, Irvine, California. May God's blessing be upon you on this Sunday, June 30th, 2019. Signed by the Reverend Dr. S.T. Williams, Jr., Senior Pastor, and Dr. Raphael Johnson, President, Church Council. All right, amen. amen. And it's a little something, don't spin it all in one spot. Okay. All right. Okay, so what well, just before you start speaking. I just want you know, to tell us you just finished an intensive class, what we call a CMC program, and uh, it's called Cross Cultural Ministry Center at Concordia Irvine. And um, probably the most intense thing he's done, putting an entire semester of work in three and a half weeks. Uh, and so you want to kind of tell us about that, and then we're going to have a, a little blessing. Go ahead. Um, good morning, church. Um, I think 16 weeks was already intense for me. So going through three weeks, that's even more. <laughs> um, and um, these three weeks taught me a lot, like what God is doing into my life. Like um, I thought I couldn't do 16 weeks, and then God said, well, let's do about three weeks. <laughs> and then <laughs> that's what happened. And uh, we ju I just finished the classes, but I still have some homework to um, to submit. I'm working on them now. Um, so I thank God for his blessing. So it's something I cannot really imagine, but it's happening. And it's like I'm living it as it happening. So that's how I receive it. And I just won't stop thanking God and also thanking um, St. Paul for their support and always praying for me. And also the church in Haiti, they are praying for me. They always send me texts saying they are praying. And that gave me the strength to keep going and to working hard. And um, like I said, it's not me working hard, but God is like helping me to do the work. And thank you, everyone. And thank you, St. Paul. Amen. Mr. Martin, if you would give a, if you would give a blessing and then we'll... Gracious Father, I want to thank you for this man, Vicar Bears. I want to thank you for his resolution to serve you with a full and gracious heart. I want you to give him good health and strength and the mental fortitude that he will need to continue, not only to continue his education, but to work your will among us. We are confident that in the power of the Holy Spirit, he will achieve. And that your church, not just here, not just in Haiti, but through the entire world, 
will be blessed in his ministry. In the most holy name of Jesus Christ, we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 And Stacy has something there. Hi. Congratulations. The Sunday School just wants to say we're so proud of your achievement. And God bless you. And we have a small gift for you. Okay, I'd like to call up Sophia. Where's Sophia? Is she back there? All right, we can see Sophia. It's a blessing. I see Kamari arrived in church, so we'll be able to acknowledge her this morning. Amen? All right. Come on up, Sophia, if you would, please. Amen. To God be the glory. All right. Okay. Completion. Take your microphone. Please. For the from Kelser Elementary School, Los Angeles. May God continue to bless blessings be upon you, the Reverend S. T. Dr. Williams Jr. and Dr. Raphael Johnson, President, Church Council. Amen. We got you a little something too. Amen. Welcome. Okay, so what you're going to share with us this morning? What grade you finished? All right, and what school you're going to be going to, okay? All right, and what do you want to be when you really grow up? Okay, I just finished sixth grade, going on to the seventh. Um, I'm, I don't know what school I'm going to next for my seventh grade year. Um, and I would like to be a therapist when I grow up, and that's mm -hmm. it. <laughs> okay, all right, a therapist, very good, very good. All right. We can Martin, you can put a blessing on her. Can do a group picture at the end. Lord God, we thank you for the life of this beautiful woman. As Sophia grows and develops into the godly woman you want her to be, give her strength and grace, joy and peace, and fulfill your will in her life each and every day. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Miss Stacy has something. I'll stay there. Sophia from the Sunday School, we just want to say we're so proud of you and we wish you the best in all of your future endeavors, okay? And here's a small gift from the Sunday School. Amen. Amen. Okay, have a seat right there, okay? All right. Kamari, if you would come up. All right, we're so glad Kamari's here this morning. Certificate of Completion from your St. Paul family for Kamari Burkhart, Windsor Hills Elementary School. You didn't go there? KIPP Academy? Okay, well, okay. I, we'll get it we'll corrected, get it corrected but that was what I was given, but we'll correct that. But that's from our pastor and our president of the church council. And here's a little gift, something for you. Don't spend it all in one spot, okay? Okay. So what you're going to tell us is, again, what school you did go to, all right? What school you're going to be going to, okay? And you're going to share with us this morning, what do you want to be when you really, really grow up? Okay? All right. The school I went to, the school I really went to was um, Kip Scholar Academy. It's a um, junior middle school. Um, and, I, and I finished fifth grade. Um, and what school will you be going to since you finished this grade? Um, are you going to stay there or are you going to go to another school? I really don't know what the name is of you, the um, school on the side. Okay, it's so a sixth grade? Mm -hmm. You'll be going to sixth grade? Okay. And when you grow up, what are you going to be? Uh, what do you think God is telling you? Any idea yet? To be an architect. To be an architect, okay? I think you can do that, amen. To God be the glory, okay? To God be the glory, okay? All right, Miss Stacy. Kamari from the Sunday School, we want to say congratulations on your 
on what you've accomplished so far, and good luck in the future, okay? May God bless your plans, your future plans, and we love you. Here's a small gift from the Sunday School. Amen. As we acknowledged before, Dana could not be with us this morning, but Myra and her big brother is here. If you would come up, Myra, at this time and just receive this for us. And when Dana's in church, we will definitely have her come forth and tell us she graduated from Los Angeles Technical Center with her high school uh, diploma. And we're very excited about that, okay? So if you receive those things, all right, on behalf of her, all right, all right. Let's there's, there's nothing to present. All right, you're going to give that to him to take to Dana, okay? Miss, you have anything that you want for, for Dana? Okay, all right. No, she's going to give that to him for DeMarco, okay? She's got something for DeMarco to give to DeMarco, okay? Mm -mm. Let's just take it. Okay, so I, this is from the Sunday School for Dana and for DeMarco. And what I want you to tell them is that we love them and we're so proud of their accomplishments so far and we wish them the best in the future. Give them a hug and say, we, we love you from the Sunday School. Okay, thank you so much, all right, all right. And then of course, Lisa cannot be with us as well. And then we have our, our World City Center partners here with us. We have Brittany Crawford and I forgot the parent's name, I should be ashamed. Jennifer, all right, come on up. Let's thank the Lord for our World City Center partners this morning. All right, go right in there, all right. As you can see in your worship folder, we had a beautiful graduation on Friday. The uh, 17 of our students graduated from World City Center, and it's the largest class we've had since we began our partnership six years ago. Absolutely, absolutely a blessing. In addition to that, you know that our partnership allows us also now to expand into our youth center, i.e. parsonage, and classes start Monday. Monday, isn't that something? Monday, and we've been working on this almost one year. Eric, it's been one year. It's been one year, huh? One year. We've been working on this project for one year, and God has answered our prayers in a big way. I think God deserves another big praise offering uh, for us as well, and that's absolutely beautiful. So we just wanna say to our World City Center Partners, congratulations on 17 preschool graduates. We expect it to be doubled next year. May God continue blessing to be upon you and your crew. Um, presented today, June the 30th, by the Reverend Dr. S.T. Williams, Jr. and Dr. Raphael Johnson, President of Church Council. So Amen. display it proudly over there for <laughs> us. Okay, we're going to let Brittany or Jennifer share a few things with us this morning about World City Center and the wonderful things that are happening. To God be the glory. Yes, like Pastor said, it's been a year, so thank God. <laughs> um, we just love being a part of St. Paul's and having this partnership has been great because it is a, a beacon, mm -hmm. and that's what St. Paul's is, of mm -hmm. comfort and for blessings to us. And we really appreciate being a part of your family and you being a part of ours. And I will let our graduates know because we do we do stay in touch with our graduates and watch and see where they go and and and, sh and see them grow. Um, so we will definitely let them know that you send their love and their blessings mm -hmm. and your blessings. And thank you so much. Can you tell us anything about how many students we may have on Monday? We have 18 new students yes. on Monday. Yes, yeah, great job, great job, that's <laughs> um, wonderful. And Jennifer, um, her daughter is one of the graduates, um, one of the original babies. <laughs> so it's gonna be very difficult for us not to see her daughter as, along with the other 16, because we've grown with them for five years. So it's going to be, <laughs> It's going to be a challenge to, to not to, to keep it 
going on Monday. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, okay. Um, but we, we know that we have the strength and we have faith and we will get through Monday and we'll have them for another five years, some of them, and we'll get to the same place. All right. So God, same God. Place. Thank you. Uh, my daughter, June Archie, she graduated on Friday. Um, she's been at World City Center since she was five and a half months. Um, oh. So it, it's been a home for us and it's been a blessing to find such a, a second home for my, you know, like a second home for my family. And we love Brittany and we appreciate you guys, yeah. the partnership you guys yeah. have. And we've spent a lot of time, I even played violin here in the church and <laughs> at our adult orchestra um, at World City Center. So we're blessed to have World City Center in our, in our life. Amen. So thank you. God bless. <laughs> Deacon Martin, if you could bless us, if you would. The love of education, the love of wisdom is something you have given us, Father. And we give thanks for these godly women and godly women and men who keep that light going. We ask your blessing and your wisdom for each of these students who have now graduated. We pray that your spirit would be with them, guide them, mm -hmm. lead them, yes. protect them. Mm -hmm. And while you're at it, you want to guide, lead, and protect each of us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 All right, so we're going to go up to the altar. Come on up, graduates, with Pastor up here. And uh, Dr. Dawn has agreed to be my photographer this morning. Come on up. All right. She did that so willingly. You see, I just beckoned and she came right on up. All right, Deacon Martin, if you could join us up here. Miss Fifi, Miss Stacy, if you would join us up here as well. All right. Brother Eric, if you'd come on up as well. All right. All right, Enoch. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. You got one more with Enoch. Okay. You like that? Okay. okay. Step up a little bit. Step up, step up, step up, step up, step up. Walk. Step up. There we go. There we go. All right. All right. There we go. Can you get us in there, Don? All right, very good. To God be the glory. Congratulations, everyone. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Ms. Bridget, for being here, okay? We look forward to a great report next year, doubling our classes. Amen? To God be the glory. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Stacy and Miss Elise, it's time for children's messages. I, I may have sent them back too soon, huh? Okay? Yeah. All right. All right. I'd like all of our children, those who are up here and others, to come on up for our children's message, all right? Miss Stacy and Miss Elise are ready for you, okay? All right. Come on, big man, for, for children's message. Come on. Come on. this message there. Got it. We're waiting on your phone. children's message, okay? All right. Very good. Good morning, everyone. So today I want to talk about being healthy. And did you know that God wants us to take good care of ourselves? Did you hear, have you heard that before? Yes. So why do we want to take good care of ourselves? Are there 
Anybody have any ideas? Well, when we take care of ourselves, we glorify God. Did you know that? When we take care of ourselves, we make sure that our hair is combed and we groom ourselves, we brush our teeth, we go to the, to the dentist, to the doctor, right? And we try to eat healthy. That glorifies God, which means to bring him honor. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, this is a very good scripture which I want you to, to remember. It tells us, whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. So we do that when we care for our bodies and we live a healthy lifestyle because our body is God's temple. And we are now in the season, the church season of Pentecost, where we reflect on the Holy Spirit. And we are reminded that the Holy Spirit lives inside of those who believe in him. And when we accept Jesus into our hearts, God gives us his spirit to help us live the kind of life he wants us to live. And we know that we were bought with a price the death of Jesus, and because of it, now we will have eternal life in heaven when we die. So one way to take good care of ourselves, our bodies, is to eat healthy food. Okay, so Miss Elise has some flashcards of different types of food. She's going to hold them up. I'm going to call them out, and you tell me whether these foods are healthy or unhealthy, okay? Okay, so let's try it. Miss Elise, show the first card. Corn, would that be healthy or unhealthy? Healthy because it's a good vegetable to eat, right? Okay, very good. You pass question number one. Good job. Okay, another picture, Miss Elise. Unhealthy. Unhealthy. Soda. What have we heard about soda? Is it healthy or unhealthy? Unhealthy. Coke stains your teeth. And, it, and Coke can stain your teeth, too. When you smile, you won't have those pretty, pretty white pearls to show, right? Okay. The next one, Miss Elise. Broccoli. Healthy, a healthy green vegetable, right? How many of you like broccoli to eat? Like broccoli? Okay. Very good. Okay. A, a, a few more, and then you'll get the idea. Okay, I think we have a bowl of salad. How many of you like to eat salad? Okay, that's a good idea to eat because it's vegetables, right? And it gives you vitamins and minerals so you can grow big and strong. Okay, Miss Elise, what's coming up next? Let's see. What is that? Candy. We like it, though, don't we? Tell the truth. I know we like the candy, but it's full of sugar, so it's not as healthy as maybe the vegetables, right? And then you have to go to the dentist, and then you get cavities, and you don't like that, right? Okay. And the next picture, we have the McDonald's french fries. Yeah, I get a lot of laughter out of that. Yeah, how many of you go to McDonald's for french fries? Yes. Is that healthy or unhealthy? Unhealthy because it's fried foods, right? It's not supposed to be healthy. It's considered a junk food. But we love them. <laughs> we have the milk, right? Which it's just supposed to be what? Healthy? Okay, it's full of calcium and other good things that make us grow strong. And one more. We have what? The cookies. How many of you have gone into the cookie jar when mother said, wait, eat dinner first, okay? But we love the cookies. Okay, so the point is that even though some foods are healthy and not so healthy, we enjoy them all. So this is the point that we're trying to make today. 
So in Jesus' day, the law stated that some food was unclean. They considered some food unclean, like swine, which is pork. And if you eat bacon, that's pork, right? So one day, Jesus' disciples asked him a question about eating pork. And he said this, which is very important in Matthew chapter 15, verses 10 through 20, that nothing that enters a person's mouth can make him unclean. In other words, what we eat cannot make us unclean or unhealthy. It's a person's heart uh, that can make him or her unclean. If we have bad thoughts and we have words that come out of our mouth that displease God, that makes us unclean, not the food we eat. So Jesus told the disciples that all foods are okay to eat. So if we want to indulge a little bit in maybe some french fries or some bacon or once in a while have some junk food, it's, it's okay, but not too much. We don't want to overdo it, right? We want to balance our diet with healthy and unhealthy food. So healthy food, we know, will give us energy, right? And when we have energy, we can do God's work better. Because in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it reminds us that we are God's masterpiece, right? He created each one of us special. And we have special talents and special careers ahead of us, as we just talked about. And we've accomplished so much. And he wants us to be healthy so we can have more energy to do the things that he has planned for us to do, right? We want to eat healthy, we want to exercise, we want to see the doctor regularly for checkups. And one of his plans also for us is to be good witnesses, to tell others about Jesus. He wants us to be good role models of the Christian faith by living our lives in a way that is God-pleasing. So remember, whenever we take care of our bodies and we exercise, we see the doctor, and we treat our bodies with respect, we glorify God. And that is the main purpose of it all, is to give glory to God. Okay? Remember that. Let us pray. Please fold your hands, bow your heads, and close your eyes. Dear Jesus, help us to take good care of our bodies so that we are healthy. Then we will have more energy to do your work and to be good witnesses. In this way, we glorify and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you for listening, and we're ready for Sunday school. It's time to go into the Word together uh, this morning. I ask Deacon to come up and share our Word with us this morning. And, uh, you know, we don't have communion so that we'll be able to get right into the meat of the Word and, and the sermon in just a few moments. Good morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We begin in the book of 1 Kings. And that's in page 555, 559. And in case you'd forgotten, the Book of Kings was the book in which we got to see how well they followed God's law. Short answer, not very. In fact, you're going to hear one of the prophets' complaints about the way the people worked. We're looking at 1 Kings 19, 
the second half of verse 9 to verse 21. And this is somebody you know, a guy named Elijah, who after he beats the prophets of Baal, has his life threatened, has a very bad time, and decides to tell God how bad it is. If God didn't know. Are you there? Amen. All right, let's begin. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me, too. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael king over Aram. Also, anoint Jehu son of Nimshi king over Israel. And anoint Elisha son of Shaphat from Abel Manoah to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazael and Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and all whose mouths have not kissed him. Mm. This is the word of the Lord. Remember, although it looks bad, there are always men and women who will stand with you in obedience to the Lord. Pray for them and trust God to help you find them. The next reading will come within the book of Galatians, and that's on page 1812 or 1815. The Galatians, sadly, were a church that forgot that God gave them freedom, and they heard some false teaching that tried to imprison them. And Paul had to tell them that they weren't supposed to go that way. There are two choices. See which one makes sense. We're looking at chapter 5, verses 13 to 25. If you're there, we can begin. Paul writes to them and to us, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The whole law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. You keep fighting and devouring each other. Watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, 
hatred, discord, jealousies, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. In honor of Jesus Christ and his resurrection, we ask that those of you who are physically able, please rise. The Holy Gospel appointed for this day is found in the Gospel record of our brother, St. Luke. We'll be reading from the ninth chapter, page 1611 or 1613. We'll be looking at the 51st to 62nd verse. Jesus has to uh, straighten some people up in terms of what's happening and where he's going and where he needs to be. Luke 9, starting at verse 51. If you're there, please let me know by saying amen. amen. Here is what the gospel says. As the time approached for him, Jesus, to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. And he sent messengers on ahead who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John said this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them, even as Elijah did? But Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they went to another village. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests. The Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, follow me. But the man replied, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll be coming back to those lessons in just a few moments. But we have a common faith together. We know that God created us. We know that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ saved us from sin and from death and from the devil. And we know we've been gifted with the Holy Spirit to do great things for the kingdom. And the Holy Spirit leads, guides, and directs our paths in the footsteps of Jesus. We confess together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. This is my confession and belief. Amen. The peace, Lord, be with you also, saints. Share that with our brothers and sisters in worship this morning. I want to tell you all I was in the streets when I received the call. When the Lord told me to come to St. Paul, I left the battlefields of Sparta, y'all. With my new shield, the word of Christ. When I'm lost, it's my compass in my flashlight. In Next for me, home, it the afterlife.
Bread of life sent down from glory. Many things you were on earth, a holy king, carpenter. You are the living word. Bread of heaven sent down from glory. Many things you were on earth. Holy King, the carpenter, you are the li awesome ruler. Awesome ruler, gentle redeemer, God with us, the living truth, and what a friend we have in you. Bread of life, bread of life. Sent down from glory, many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter, awesome ruler, awesome ruler, gentle redeemer, God with us, the living truth, and what a friend. We have in you, you Jesus, 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 that's what we call you. Major born, but on a tree, you died to save humanity. Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's what we call you. Made you born, but on a tree, you died to save humanity. You are the oh, 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 oh,
living word. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Church, I tell you, if it wasn't for bad news, there'd be no news at all. Amen? Ain't that the phrase, right? You turn on the television, all they want to talk about is the bad things. They want to talk about nothing good, right? Uh, you uh, look at your phone, and you, uh, every time you get something pop up on your phone, it's about something, maybe something negative. You go to work, and you're trying to have a good day, and somebody try to mess up your day, right, with saying something to you or doing something. You call some family members and friends on the phone. You want to talk about, well, some good things happen in your life, and they start the family gossip. And here we go, and as you kind of get them off track, right? Or um, you, you, uh, you pick up the community newspaper thinking you're going to find out something good happening in the community and all you see is uh, who shot who and, and who stole this and who went to jail and who did that. Right? All that bad news, right? You go to the gym, you go, I come here to work out and somebody tap you in the shoulder. Now they want to talk and what they want to tell you about something bad that has happened, right? You're at the marketplace and you're in the line and you're going to pay for your stuff and somebody call your name. Did you hear about that? You know, that type of thing. I mean, the world is just full of bad news, you know, wherever we go. It's so sad when you think about it, but it is also reality in our lives. And so it's Pentecost season, and we have these texts before us this morning, and you can kind of say, well, those texts didn't help us. They gave us some bad news too, right? But you can also so say that they gave us some good news as well. Because in our epistle text, our Galatians text, Paul says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. And then further down, he describes what the flesh looked like. And that's when you probably said, uh-oh, this is what the flesh looks like. Fleshly acts are obvious, he says. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And all you can go is, oh, 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 right? That's the bad news, right? That's the bad news that we receive thinking, wow, okay. As a church, that's not who I want to be, but I struggle, right? And then we get the good news from the Apostle Paul as well. He said, but church, remember, you have the Spirit of God with you, right? The Spirit of God with you. The Spirit of God is love and joy and peace and forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against us things there is no law, i.e. the law of God has been fulfilled in Jesus Christ on the cross, right? In these things we share joy with everyone around us. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passion and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, what the rest of us say? Let us keep in step with the Spirit. Amen? Well, let me assure you this morning, church, Jesus takes us to a whole nother level. When we get to the gospel text, this good news just takes a whole nother level. We have these three individuals who say, I want to follow you, Jesus, wherever you go. Remember, they've experienced his miracles. They've watched his power. They've seen his humility. They've watched those 12 disciples following him around. And they say, I want to be able to follow you just like that too, Jesus. But, and the but got them in trouble. Right? The but got them in trouble. And at the end of all of that, Jesus says to them, no one who puts his hand to the plow, i.e. says, I want to follow you, want to go to work with you, Jesus, and look back is fit for service for the kingdom of God. And the church say amen. We already know that Life has its struggle. We already know that life is not easy. Amen? We already know that Satan and all his temptations and all the challenges around us, that they're not going to stop at all, even though we have faith in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. We know this. We also know, church, 
that they're all kind of enemies of the cross around us. A lot of them. We already know that as well. We also already know that as a people of God, that our faith is stronger than the challenges. Tell your neighbor, my faith is stronger than any challenge. My faith is stronger than any challenge. Therefore, we're able to carry out the mission of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, in spite of the temptations, in spite of the challenges, in spite of the bad news, in spite of all those things that try to stop us, our faith is stronger than any challenge or temptation that comes our way. So as the Apostle Paul is writing to the Galatians, and as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says, you can't have a but and follow me. You can only follow me if you're willing to give it up and go and do as I command you to do. Amen, church? So the Apostle Paul, he just speaks truth, the kind of truth that says, church, walk in your victory. Do not allow the world around you to make you believe that you are not walking in your victory. He says, be more dedicated and committed to the mission of Christ. Be more caring and loving and compassionate in your faith. Be more open to the utterance of the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, I need you to teach me something. Holy Spirit, I need you to guide me. Holy Spirit, I need you to protect me. Holy Spirit, I need you to open my mouth, open my mind so I can speak on behalf of Jesus so that nothing gets in the way and I don't tell God, but, but, right? But this happened, and you know, and then, but God, that happened, right? Right? You know what I'm talking about, right? That we freely say we're going to serve in the power that is already ours in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So our lesson today is about the challenges and also about the blessing. But the blessings are bigger. Our faith is bigger than any of the challenges around us. Our blessings come full throttle to us from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We have that spiritual covering over us wherever we go. Our faith to walk through the storms of life, help us to know that there is no person, place, or thing that can stop us when we're walking with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The blessings we have is also the assurance of knowing, church, that God is with us and the bad news of this world cannot stop us because we have the fruit of the Spirit to demonstrate to the world around us. Let the church say amen to that. And you know as well as I do, Whenever you demonstrate love and graciousness and hospitality and caring and compassion for someone, it's much better than trying to figure out how to degrade them or say something negative to them and get their attention. Amen? It doesn't work that way. So Paul says to us, the acts of the flesh, you know, they may be around, they may still try to tempt you, and that's why he makes it so crystal clear. He draws a line in the sand, if you want to say it, you know. Uh, he, he doesn't mix any words whatsoever. He's direct and to the point. And, and these kind of acts of the flesh, they're sinful and they don't represent us. Because Jesus Christ went to the cross and he paid for our sins once and for all. And we can allow those things to represent us. Amen? But the beauty of it is that he also is very clear and, and also very direct and very passionate about the fruits of the Spirit in our lives and how we are to use the fruits of the Spirit. He's clear, direct, and he's scripted. He wants to motivate us to live in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the will that he has for our lives. It's not going to be easy. Tell your neighbor, it's not going to be easy. But by faith, all things are possible. Amen? By faith, all things are possible. God has created us, church, with a free will from the beginning with Adam and Eve. And you guys have maybe heard me say on different times, one of my questions for God when I get to the gates and he lets me in, I got to ask you, why did you give us free will? That messed up everything, right? But God said, I didn't want a robot relationship with you whatsoever. I don't want a situation where I push a button or turn a crank and get you to do what I want you to do. I want an intimate relationship with you. I want an equal agreement with you. I love you. You love me. You love others. You see? 
And I don't want a robot that when I say go right, he goes right, and, and I don't want to say you go left, you go left, or I need you to do this. No, I want someone who is able to be, understand the depth of gratitude and praise and thanksgiving and hope and joy, and then return that back to me because they understand why I gave that to them. We are blessed. Tell your neighbor, we're blessed. We're blessed. We're not robots. We are in an intimate, ongoing, loving, unconditional relationship with the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, who knows everything about us and loves us anyhow. Now, that's a big picture. Amen? And then he says, I want you to take these fruits of the Spirit that are yours and go out and bless people with them wherever you go. All God wants from us is obedience to him, gratitude and thankfulness, as he pours blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing in our lives, and then we take those blessings with the fruit of the Spirit, and we, brought, we bring others into relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> we acknowledged our graduates this morning, and I tell you, just, just, do, just do like this right here. Just pat yourself right here. Go ahead. Just pat yourself. Come on. The faithfulness of the saints of St. Paul makes it possible for us to walk in these milestones with our students. Six years ago, we didn't have a relationship with World City Center, and now World City Center has now graduated 17 students and moving 18 students into our youth center. Come on, pat yourself on the back. Pat yourself on the back. Your faithfulness to the Lord Jesus Christ and his word and carrying out his mission in this world made it possible. And as you look at Kamari, let me see if I can get this right now. Four, five. She's the fifth or sixth generation of St. Paulian, and she's on her way. Pat yourself on the back. Because you are faithful with time, talents, and treasures. Be sure that our little ones are connected to the word. That our little ones understand a relationship with Jesus Christ. That our little ones understand that the church is with me. My church family is here. They're not going to leave me. They're going to accept me. They're going to encourage me. They're going to empower me. They're going to pray for me so that I'm able to be who God wants me to be in this world. Amen? I think God deserves a praise offering for that. Amen? A praise offering for that. We're here to carry out this mission and to see these young people graduate and to hear what they want to be able to achieve and to see the expansion of the kingdom of God. It says we will let our light shine before men, that God will see our good deeds, and then other men around us, men and women, will want to know who is that. And we can say it's Jesus, right? Our good works. Time, talents, and treasures, our good works of faithfulness, our good works of serving the Lord Jesus Christ makes it possible to do the things that God has called us to do for almost 95 years. 95 years. The saints have sat in these pews and said, we're here until we hear Jesus say to us, one-on-one -on -one or as a group, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen? That's who we are, church. And as we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us throughout these summer months, we have all these wonderful summer outreach activities that you see in your worship folder. Let's take advantage of them. Let's invite people to participate in them. As we look at ways that we can be better servants with the gifts that God has given to us, we have everything we need. Tell your neighbor, I have everything I need. Everything. Everything we need. And God did not create robots, did he? He created those who are in a loving, intimate relationship with him that are on a mission to achieve great things for the kingdom of God so that we'll be able to see more of our young people reach other milestones in their lives and give God the glory for it all. And to that, we can say thank you, thank you, and thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, to be in your house and to see your word being so crystal clear. Uh, yes, we must admit this morning, this word really drew a line in the sand. Oh, but we're so thankful that it's so crystal clear for us through your apostle and from your mouth that we cannot look back, but we can only look forward.
that you've called us to go to do great things for your kingdom, not to say, but Lord, wait, but when I, oh Lord, give me. No, but we move forward to do the things you've called us to do, Lord God, so that your kingdom will be advanced here on earth, so that heaven will be filled up, Lord, so the joy of our salvation would flow through us to those around us, Lord God, and they will want to know who is this, and we can tell them his name is Jesus. In your name we pray, amen and amen. Holy Spirit, rain down, rain down. Oh, comforter and friend, how we need your touch again. Holy Spirit, rain. Let your power fall, your voice be heard. Come and change our hearts as we stand on your word. Holy Spirit, rain down. Holy Spirit, rain Comforter and friend, how we need your touch again. Holy Spirit, rain down, rain down. Let your power fall and your voice be heard. Come and change our hearts as we stand on your word. Holy Spirit, rain down. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no man mind can know what God has in store. So open up heaven, open it wide over your church and over our lives holy spirit rain down rain down oh comforter and friend how we need your touch again Spirit rain down, rain down. Let your power fall and your voice be heard. Come and change our hearts as we stand on your word, Holy Spirit, rain down on us. That is our prayer in this season. It's our season. Tell your neighbor, it's our season. It's Pentecost season. It's us and the Holy Spirit. This is our season to do what God has called us to do in this world. Amen? All right, we rise for the blessing of the Lord. Now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit bless our every effort to represent Jesus wherever we go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together the words of doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures. 
creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Saints, we can remain standing. Let's sing one verse of our closing hymn, uh, God Be With You Till We Meet Again. We've got several announcements we need to make today. And we, our students want to have a party. They don't want to sing the hymns. Amen? Amen? So we want to enjoy them in the fellowship hall and celebrate with them uh, their milestone. We're going to sing one verse of God Be With You Till We Meet Again. Thank you, St. Paul family. Hi, I'm Dr. Dawn, Dawn Norfleet. Uh, my brother is Michael Norfleet, and um, I guess you've seen me around here playing the flute and uh, every once in a while singing. So I have a question for you. First of all, I'm going to make this really short.